So I'm now going to show you how to tie up the skimmer rig from the Jordan Holloway rig strip range. And this is a really interesting rig. So it's basically got a bulk with a, some droppers below, tapered below, to make a nice slow fall of the hook bait. And there are those days in winter when deep water, where the fish just don't live on the bottom. So obviously you need to get their attention and to them to follow the hook bait down and to get a bite on the bottom, basically. Like a bulk and two droppers some days just doesn't get you as many bites. This will get you more bites on harder days. So I'll actually show you how to tie it up now. So the actual rig strips themselves, they tell you, they give you all the information you need to actually tie the rigs up. So for this actual rig itself, I'll show you what we need. I'll just put it on the rig mate first. So it has a hole on the one end and a groove on the other end. And the whole end actually goes on the lowest value of the actual rig mate itself. And then this actual groove just slots over the actual other pin on the end of the rig mate itself. So we're actually ready now to tie the rig, but the actual components it says on the rig strip itself. So. We're going to type a Kerry float today. So this is it. This is a nice deep, this rig basically is for deep water. So you want biggish floats. So obviously this is a gram Kerry. It's got a nice flexi wire stem, nice and long, nice and stable in any wind, in any chop. And basically it's got a really fine cane bristle. I really like that. Um, some days when it's a bit flat calm, I'd like to use these because obviously it's more sensitive than a hollow bristle. But obviously when it's more windy and you can't see your float and the conditions aren't as good sometimes a hollow bristle floats good but this one has a cane one and um, yeah we're going to use him today we're going to need 013 power line because that's what i make most of my silverfish rigs up on and it tells you on the rig strips what line to tie them on so this is 013 power line it's a nice durable line a line that's not going to break because i hook a big carp um, and it's just not going to let me down basically so perfect 013 main line and we're going to need some shots, so obviously on the rig strip itself it says we're going to need 8s for the bulk and some number 9s and some number 10s tapered down beneath the bulk. So these are the actual shots I use. Let me just make sure they're shut before I hold them up. These are Balabini shots. These are really nice and hard and uniform shots. And I like that they're hard because they stay on the line exactly where you put them on. So I'm personally not the kind of person who messes around too much with the shotting patterns once. I make a rig up, the shots stay where they are pretty much, and these stay where you want them to. They don't ping off. They're nice and uniform, so when I actually make my bulk of my rig, it'll be all nice and straight, and it's not going to be like a caterpillar, so my presentation is going to be fantastic. So these are the actual shots I use. Eights, nines, and tens. Going to need some silicon for the float. This is just 0 0.5 mil silicon. Because the actual stem of the float is quite thick, we're going to need thick rubber. So 0 0.5 silicon winder to put them on um, we're going to need some number 13 stops these are interesting these are just for dotting that float down a little bit what i like to do with the shot so i make my bulk up and i like to get my float shotted in the shot and tube to about the whole bristle and then just bring it down to about half of the bristle with the number 13s and then i set perfect how i want it so number 13s i've got a loop tire just for tying a loop on the actual end of my rig which connects to my hook length I prefer using a loop tie because I just think it makes a uniform loop every time. A really nice strong loop as well. So use a loop tire for that. Got some shot pliers and some scissors. Scissors for cutting the line. These are just pressed and pliers for putting the shots on. I prefer to use pliers than my teeth because obviously you're going to damage your teeth. And it also means you're not putting too much pressure on them. It keeps them nice and uniform. And obviously your presentation then is really, really good. So use pliers for that. And then the last thing just a black marker pen, just for marking the actual line when it's all set up on the rig mate, white marking the line of where the shots are gonna go. And obviously this rig strip has the exact shots of where they're positioned on the line. So just mark it on with a little marker and you can put the shots on in the perfect places and tie your duplicates exactly the same every time. So just a little black marker pen for that. So I think we'll start tying the actual rig. So just get my 013 power line and attach it to the end of the rig mate. And today, I'm actually just attaching it to the end of the extension piece and I always make my rigs up on the extension piece because it gives you that extra line and that extra maneuverability to be able to put the rig in the shotting tube and uh, test the float without having to adjust the, the actual spool on the rig mate all the time. So I love the extension piece for that. So I'm just attaching it onto the end like so. Just tighten it up a little bit. 
get to like the end of the line, so it's where I'm going to start here, right in front of myself. So I cut a nice straight edge. I find that just helps pass the line through the silicon on the rubbers on the float, basically. So just going to put the float on now, put the actual line through the eye on the float, like so. Just going to move the float the line a bit more close to myself, let a bit of tension out, like so. So the float's on the line now, and I just need to cut three pieces of silicon to put onto that float. So what I like to do is obviously, like I say, cut three. I cut two, about two, three mil long, nice small little pieces. One of them's just for going beneath the body, and one's going to go in the middle. And then what I like to do is tie the last one a little bit longer, cut the last one a little bit longer, just to over overhang on the bottom of the stem, basically, because if you put that last piece on, and it doesn't overhang basically. If you just push it up and there's a bit of stem shown beneath, it can rub on the actual line and damage the line. It could end up breaking your rig. So you don't want that. So I like to have that last piece overhanging. So I've cut my three pieces now. Just gonna put them on the line. So that's one. This is two. And this is number three, like so. So they're perfectly on the line now. Just need to put them on the float. So this first piece, when I've managed to, this can be a bit fiddly, this can actually, work them actually onto the float stem. Like so, just pushing them on, slowly but surely we'll get there. This is the worst part of the rig making, this is putting the actual silicones on. Being a fiddly little badger he is. That's one. And I put that not right beneath the body. If you put it right beneath the body, obviously the line's digging into the body and that um, sometimes can cause you to cut the actual float open. Like the line digs in and cuts the float open. And then when you're playing a big fish and it one happens to tend to ping off every now and again, you can end up with your eye pulling out with the actual pressure. So what I like to do is just relieve that pressure on the float and just put it about a centimetre below the body, just to relieve that tension on the body. So that's the first bit on. Second bit, just goes in the middle. So obviously if that first bit happens to break or get any problems, that's when I just move that up a little bit. But I like that bit in the middle just because it keeps the line nice and straight on the float, like so. And then this last bit, really important, this one, this longer one, um, just leave it overhanging a little bit because Obviously, I don't want that stem rubbing on the line and uh, causing any breakages or tangles. So, just moving him up a little bit more. He's about half on at the minute. I only want a little overhang, you know. I don't want to have most of my silicon overhanging the float. It's a little bit fiddly, this bit. We're getting there, though. We're getting there. Like so. So, now I've got the float perfectly on the line. So, what I just do move that up out of the way a little bit cut this line here where I've been messing around with the silicones on the float I just like to cut that bit off and start with a fresher bit of line just let a bit of tension out like so and now I'm going to make the actual loop that connects to my hook length so what I like to do just create a big overhand loop like that loop of line put my middle finger in the middle of that line but like that to keep that nicely under tension there and I just get the actual crook of the loop tie and put it underneath those two lines and twist it twice. I want to create a double knot. And then with this actual loop I've formed, I just put in that in the actual middle of the loop tire, like so. And then just let it all go. Let it all start to form that knot. Just wet it up because it forms nicer, stronger knots. And then slowly just work it off that loop tire. It's a bit fiddly, but just work it off and it eventually um, comes into that middle bit and it basically forms the perfect loop every time. They're always the same size. Nice small loops, nice strong loops, so that's that. And I just cut that tag off, nice and fine. I don't need a, don't need a massive tag on it or anything, like that. And now what I'm gonna do is attach this loop to the bottom of the rig mate, and we're ready then to start putting the actual shots on the line. So just put that there on the actual loop, on the loop, on the pin, sorry. Put the loop on the pin, put that line in, put it under tension. Tension's really important. It makes putting the shots on so much easier if um, the line's under quite a bit of tension. So tighten them up. 
just move that float out of the way now because we don't need that. That's why this extension just is perfect because it just means that you've got more line to play with basically. You can just move that all out of the way um, while you put your shots on. So I'm just going to open my shots up and going to mark now with a black marker where I actually want the actual shots to go. And the rig strip tells you exactly where they go. So what I actually do is just mark with a black marker, run my fingers along the line, pushing down the rig strip and where I actually want them shots to go. So I know the first one's always beneath the, um, the loop for me. So I'll place one there and just slowly working up the rig strip, trying to find the next shot. Just mark it again. Next one, mark it again, 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 and then the bulk. So now all the shots are marked up on the actual line. So now it's just left a nice black marker for me to place the shots onto. So the first actual dropper is a number 10. So we'll just grab a number 10 shot get the pliers and we'll just put them under a little bit of tension not too much and just with my finger I'll just push the shot up on the line and you just put a little bit of tension on him close him up now that's the first shot off next number 10 on the next black mark like so put him on and then the next one's a number nine. Put a number nine on. So the next number nine now just going on. One more number nine dropper. And then we're going to make the bulk. And that's it. So all the droppers are on now. So obviously we're just moving up to number eights now for the bulk. So this is a gram flow. So it's going to need quite a few number eights. So... This is where it's really nice just to line all the all the slits in the shots up when you actually put them on. And it just means that you form a really nice neat bulk, really straight bulk. If you don't do this, like you can they can become a little bit like a, a caterpillar, I call it, where they're a bit wiggly everywhere. And um I just think if you get them all nicely lined up nice and straight, it's only a little thing, but I just think presentation's got to be a better. So you're gonna catch more fish. I'll put three on so far. I reckon it's going to take, I don't know what it's going to take, it's going to take a few, at least eight, I'm, I'm going to put eight on, I am, I'm going to risk it and put eight on just to see, five, six, seven, Eight. So I'll put eight on to now just to see. Just to see where we're at. I'm just going to get it in the chotting tube. So what I'm going to do is just move the float down now to beneath the bulk or above the bulk, should we say. And just put it in the actual chotting tube. And what I actually do just to test it is I get my loop that I create and just put it over the actual bristle of the float just so it's not dangling at the bottom of the shotting tube and obviously not registering basically. So... Just going to test him in the tube now. And he's not a million miles off. I reckon. Another two or three number eights and we're going to be there. We're going to be getting to the actual bristle. So I'll just put another two on. And this is a great thing about that extension. You don't have to mess around with the spool to put it in the shotting tube. You can just do it and then put it back on. And it's just so much faster um, doing it with the extension piece on. So... Just gonna put another two number eights on just to start with, just to see where we're at. And then test it again. If we need another one, we can put another one on. Nine. Ten. It's all really nice and neat. All the slits are nicely lined up on all that, that whole bulk. It's nice and straight line, and I really like that. So we'll just test it in the tube now. I've added those shots. Just loop it over the bristle again. Dunk him in. Now he's sat pretty perfect. So now we're actually on the bristle of the float. And what we need now is just a few fine tuners just to bring that down a little bit and make it to about half the bristle. I like about half the bristle. If you do it any lower, um, your float can actually sink when you start fishing on the lakes. I don't know what it is, but I always think about half the bristle is about perfect. And I like to have it a little bit more dotted down than that. But when you actually take it into a lake and... 
dot it down, it just happens to sit a little bit lower, I find. So I've just put one fine tuner on, and I reckon it's going to take three or four, so I'm going to put four on. Just to bring that bristle down a little bit. And what you can do with these is obviously adjust your float as you're fishing. So obviously if you want more bristle out, if it's really choppy, um, you can just take a couple of these off. These just ping off really easy, so it's really nice. I'm just putting them above the bulk. Still use my pliers, putting them above the bulk. And when they're on the line, what I like to do is just push them down to above the bulk, sorry. So it's all nice and neat. They're not all up the line everywhere. Just nice and neat above the actual bulk on the rig. We'll test them again, and now he should be about absolutely perfect. So we'll just put him in. Now you can see he's just sat a little bit low, but what I do, it's just it's still on the bristle. It's still that's about how I want it when I'm actually fishing. But I'd like it to be a little bit, a little bit more showing. But I'll just leave that for now, and then when I actually start fishing, I'll adjust it on the bank. But that's an absolutely perfectly made rig now. So I'm just going to loosen it on the end of the extension piece. And just actually put him on the actual winder. So this rig here is going to be used in about a top a top kit and another section of depth of water. So I'm just going to do about 18 turns of this winder, and I know that's a top kit in the next section of my pole. So just release the tension a little bit more. And so it's two, three, four, five. And I've just put the float in the middle of the winder to protect him. So he's nicely protected now by the winder. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I'll do one more just for look. Nineteen. And on these winders, what I actually do is just create a loop at the top of the winder. So it's just gonna loop over the actual edge of it. So just create a big overhand loop for this. Because what I end up doing when I start fishing, I normally end up cutting this loop down. So just a nice big one that I can see and can attach to my dacron nice and easy. So a big double overhand loop, like so. Just cut that tag bit a little bit, like that, and just loop him over the end of the actual winder. Get that tag out of my mouth, and yeah, that's the actual finished rig using the rig strips, and obviously now I've created one, and I can keep making duplicates following the actual shotting on the rig, and the actual hook length that goes with this rig is actually written on the strips as well, so it's a nice little little bonus for you. So on this rig, because I'm catching the fish's attention as it goes down in deep water, I actually use an 8-inch hook length on this rig with AccuPower of 09, nice fine line for hard winters fishing, and then to a 20 SFL hook, so a nice little hook with like a maggot or a little bit of worm or maybe a caster. So that's the actual finished rig, and yeah, get on it.